I'm going to show you how to make this terrain. And eventually, in another video, I'll show you how to make this. Sorry about the frame rate, I need to find a better screen recorder. There are links to this starting project and the finished project in the description below. For now, just ignore this folder name player. Start by adding a static body to the main scene, call it terrain, add a mesh instance and attach a script. Define a function that will contain our code. Write tool at the top and export a boolean with the same name as the function followed by set get then the function. Setter functions need to have a parameter. We're not actually going to use this parameter, so just use a couple of underscores. Now in the terrains inspector, we can click this checkbox to generate our mesh in the editor. Back in the function, instantiate a new plane mesh. This defaults to a size of two. Give it something a little bigger like four. Next, change the subdivide width and depth to three. This is the number of times the plane is split on each axis, not the amount it is split into. For instance, a subdivide of one will split the plane in two. If you want a plane split into a grid of one by one units, then the subdivide width and depth need to be one less than the X and Y values of its size respectively. Set the plane mesh to the mesh property of the mesh instance. In the top left of the scene view, click perspective and change the display to wireframe. Now we can see the subdivisions. In the mesh instance inspector, expand geometry and in material override, add a new spatial material. Click on the material, go to its inspector, expand the albedo, and change the color to something that isn't so harsh. Back in the script, increase the size and subdivide values. But be careful, the higher you set the subdivide values, the longer it will take your mesh to generate. You could potentially freeze up Godot. I'm going with 64 for the size values and 63 for the subdivide values. Now we're going to raise and lower each of the plane's vertices by a certain amount depending on their x and z coordinates. First, we need to get access to the vertices. We can do this with the surface tool. This tool's primary purpose is to create mesh, but it can do a lot of useful things. One of those things is converting a mesh into an array of data, the same array of data you would use to create an array mesh. Instantiate a surface tool, then call its create from function with the plane mesh as the first parameter and zero for the surface parameter. Call commit to arrays on the surface tool and assign the return value to a variable. Then assign the vertex array from it to another variable. Now that we have our vertices, we're going to set their Y values using noise. Godot has a noise class called open simplex noise. It has a bunch of functions that take in coordinates and return a value ranging from negative to positive one. Loop through the vertices and set the Y value of each vertex using the get noise 2D function with the X and Z values as arguments. Now instantiate a new array mesh and add our data array to it. Set that to the mesh property instead of the plane mesh. Go back to the scene and generate mesh, and as you can see, nothing happens. This is because the vertex array is a pool array, and pool arrays and their elements are passed by value, not reference. In other words, whenever you assign a pool array to a new variable, it is duplicated, and any changes made to the duplicate won't affect the original. This also goes for assigning its individual elements to new variables. Replace the for loop with another that iterates from zero to the size of the vertex array and set the Y values of each vert with it still in the array. Afterwards, set the vertices back into the data array. At first glance, it might look like nothing has happened again, but really the heights have just been set from negative one to positive one. To make this more dramatic, multiply the noise value by something like 16. Now we have something that's starting to look like terrain, but its normals are still all pointing directly up as if it's still a flat plane. So how do we calculate proper normals? Well, we don't. This is another neat thing that the surface tool can do for us. So toss the array mesh back into the surface tool with the create from function. Make sure to use zero for the surface again, call generate normals, and then call commit and assign its return value to the mesh property instead. Let's make some changes to make playing around with this terrain more convenient. Export three variables named size, subdivide, and amplitude as integers, and then replace these magic numbers with them. Also pull the noise out of the generate mesh function and export it as well. If you want rocky terrain, increase the octaves and decrease the period. If you want something that looks like rolling hills, do the opposite. Now stop ignoring this folder named player, open it up, and add the player scene to the main scene. Hit play and fall through the floor. We need some collisions. Add a collision shape to the terrain and then back in the generate mesh function, 
Call create tri mesh shape on the array mesh and then assign the return value to the shape property of the collision shape. Now hit play again. Voila. One last thing. That's the sound of me hitting the spacebar with increasing anger because the player isn't responding by jumping a lot of the time. I'll show you what to do about this in the next video. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.